All right. Well, uh, hello, everyone. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on uh, where you're joining us from today. We're, we're so glad you could uh, tune into our webinar to showcase turning data into action. Five ways your healthcare business can benefit from low code. My name is Matt Johnson. I'm a part of the Alliances team at Caspio. I lead the enablement efforts for our partners worldwide. We want to make this webinar a fun and interactive experience for everyone. So please go over to the chat, say hi, let us know where you're tuning in from. Please make sure to use the Q&A button at the bottom of the Zoom window. To leave questions throughout the event. We'll make sure to have enough breaks during the webinar to cover all of them and answer any questions at the end of the presentation. We're very proud to co-host today's webinar with our partner, Reinventors. So I'll do a brief introduction of Caspio and then turn things over to Andre to get into our great content. So Caspio is a low-code platform that can be used to solve your most complex business needs. Our mission is to enable businesses of all industries and sizes to build custom applications without coding or relying on expensive IT resources. This is accomplished via the platform's point and click tools, guided development process, and secure and scalable cloud infrastructure. We understand that growing a business comes with continuous change and improvement, and that includes the tech stack behind the business as well. Caspio enables you to build and deploy custom web apps much faster and cheaper than traditional methods, leaving you with more time and cash to do what you do best, innovate. Unlike other SaaS and low-code or no-code tools, Caspio allows for unlimited internal and external user access to the application, so your costs don't increase as you scale. If you'd like some more information on Caspio, please make sure to reach out to Andre and myself for a separate discuss, uh, discussion. And remember, no code, no compromise, just Caspio. So now I'm going to turn things over to Andre to get into our great content today. Thank you, Matt. Uh, so uh, I will also uh, spend two minutes introducing myself and uh, our company, and then we will go to the essence of uh, today's uh, present uh, webinar on how to work with data. Why do we want uh, to work with data and uh, how to turn it to action? Uh, my name is Andrei Kucherenko. Uh, before uh, 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 I spent like uh, 10 years in business advisory. I worked in Ernst & Young. It's one of the uh, world's biggest audit and consulting companies. I work in, in advisory uh, department and uh, that time I learned how much data can be valuable uh, and how much can it add to support of business decisions. And also I learned how each business uh, is unique and uh, that uh, one size fits all solutions rarely work. After that, I moved to another field to software development, uh, custom software development with full code, uh, managing a team of programmers, uh, delivering uh, custom tailored solutions for our clients. This solution works better and uh, it delivers really uh, what customers need uh, each in each specific case. But uh, the downside of this approach is that it's pretty expensive. Two years ago, I uh, realized how much progress did uh, no-code and low-code solutions made uh, over the last years. And uh, I founded a company which specializes uh, in this kind of work. Recently, we became partners with Caspio. I will tell a couple of words about that later. We have four primary services uh, in our company. First, we build custom IT systems. Second, uh, we help to connect uh, these systems to other clients' uh, applications we, uh, which our clients use. This makes a good basement for automating of business processes. And finally, we help to an analyze data from uh, the systems. And uh, actually, this is not a straightforward process with clear starting point and clear, and clear finish. Uh, it's rather uh, a loop uh, which can be uh, done in iterations. And today, primarily, I feel focus on analysis and uh, building of applications. Also, I need to mention that our company, we are called so-called tech agnostics. So we are not dependent on any one particular vendor or technology. And uh, it allows us to select the best tools for uh, which fit uh, the best for a particular problem. And uh, during today's presentation, I will emphasize a couple of things 
which I think uh, make uh, Caspio unique and uh, it may explain why we decided to make partnership with Caspio. The first question is uh, why data is crucial. Uh, since today, uh, today's webinar is dedicated to healthcare industry, I will try to use this analogy. This is an objective information about health of your business. Uh, treat it uh, like so. When you send uh, your patients uh, to take laboratory tests, uh, X-rays, or any other uh, 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 tests which provide objective data, this is pretty much similar to what uh, you can have from your business data. Uh, it allows you to create uh, uh, reasonable uh, to, to make a uh, reasonable assessment and make a, a relevant uh, plan for your patient. So you can treat uh, your business, or your healthcare practice as a, as a patient uh, and uh, use objective data for that. What to analyze? Uh, this is a simple question which has dozens and hundreds of questions. Uh, if we, take, if we st uh, start thinking about a healthcare practice as a business, there will be like few hundreds, I think, um, different metrics. And uh, it would not be realistic to uh, discuss all of them today during a short webinar. So I had to be selective. I selected uh, a few, uh, I selected five uh, groups of metrics uh, and used uh, the following criteria for that. First, it should be uh, relevant for many practices, not unique to some, uh, to some specific. Second, uh, this matrix should be very actionable. So if you analyze it, if you see that uh, there is some space for improvement, uh, there should be some clear path of what you can do about that uh, to improve the situation. And third, uh, this uh, action plan should be actionable with the help of IT systems, with custom IT systems uh, uh, which you can build. So uh, this is my today's selection. The first two metrics relate to your schedule. Uh, canceled appointments uh, can negatively uh, affect uh, your schedules and missed follow-up appointments uh, also just uh, means that you may uh, not earn that uh, money which you could. Uh, could. Uh, so if you improve these two metrics, uh, you will make your schedules busier and your uh, uh, revenue healthier. The third metric uh, is related, uh, uh, is more long-term uh, patient satisfaction. Uh, happy patients uh, will come again, will bring their family, will uh, refer you to friends, will spread good words about your business, and disappointed patients will do uh, quite the opposite. They may never come back, they may sp uh, sp uh, spread bad words and discourage others coming to you. So uh, this topic definitely needs to be managed uh, and measured. The first uh, topic may be relevant for those who are running uh, paid ads, Facebook, Google, wherever uh, you spend marketing budgets on. And the fifth one uh, will be related to costs. Uh, so I, I just uh, selected that uh, to show that uh, data can be applicable not only for uh, sales or revenue, but uh, for uh, your back office function as well. So let's start, can cancel the appointments. If you researched this topic before, uh, I'm sure that you, uh, you saw that well-advertised figure that uh, in average, impact of cancellations uh, is about $150,000 per year per physician. Uh, uh, when you Google uh, appointment cancellation, you will definitely find it. Is it applicable to your case? Let me be skeptical. Uh, as I told at the beginning, uh, I don't believe in uh, one solution fits all. And I think that uh, each business is unique. Uh, what I think uh, really makes sense is to measure the impact on your particular practice. Uh, this is a formula, uh, just mark uh, one remark. Uh, during today's webinar, uh, I will give you some formulas. Uh, please keep in mind that uh, they are not uh, written in stone or uh, 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 they are not uh, fixed. There are different ways how to calculate uh, certain metrics or certain uh, indicators. I will show you those which I uh, think uh, is uh, the most accurate way of calculation, but uh, in, uh, uh, in your case, you will need to adjust it to your reality. What data can you extract from your existing systems? What can you measure and what can you not? 
uh, if you have uh, uh, any problems uh, with applying that, uh, well, please let me know either on uh, QA section or uh, after the webinar. There will be my contacts, uh, so we may discuss it. Uh, how can uh, what, what can you do in your particular case? But let's start uh, in the ideal world. Cancellations. Uh, to, uh, it's not enough uh, to take uh, to extract only those appointments from your electronic health record EHR system or EMR system, uh, uh, only those appointments which are marked as cancelled. It's just a tip of the iceberg. Let's dive deeper. So the first we take cancelled appointments. Then uh, you need to add uh, no shows. Those appointments where patients didn't cancel and, and didn't show up. Unless you are paid in full uh, for that appointment, it creates the same gap in your schedule uh, as canceled appointments. The third one, uh, rescheduled appointments, uh, may be the most tricky. Uh, this is rescheduled appointment slots. Actually, when a patient uh, books an appointment, and for example, one week before it, it uh, he, he or she reschedules uh, this appointment for later, technically it's not a cancellation. And uh, in your records, it may be a success successful appointment at the end. But uh, what it does, it creates the same gap like a canceled appointment in your schedule. And uh, what is more scary, it can it can happen several times with one uh, scheduled appointment. One reschedule, second one, third one, and so on. So uh, please think uh, if you can extract rescheduled appointment slots uh, from your data. Uh, if, uh, if, uh, unfortunately, if your system uh, allows just to change the date of their uh, appointment during their schedule uh, without any traces, it can be a problem. But uh, if you uh, can extract this data, you, your, data uh, your metric will be much more accurate. If not, maybe there are, uh, there, there are some alternatives uh, what to do with that. Uh, less accurate, but still. Uh, the, uh, the final metric at the top of our equation uh, is rebooked appointment slots. This basically uh, improves the situation with canceled appointments. Uh, what happens when uh, one patient cancels an appointment, and for example, in a few days or in hour, maybe in a few hours, if you are lucky, uh, another patient uh, books uh, the same appointment uh, for your schedule and for your revenue, uh, uh, it has no negative impact. So it basically improves your situation with cancellations. And that's why uh, I suggest to, de uh, to deduct rebooked appointments from the, uh, from the first. Then you simply divide it by the total number of appointments and uh, you see your cancellation rate. Uh, I encourage you not to do it just uh, one metric or one indicator for your entire practice. You may need, you may want to uh, you you may uh, have more insights if you try to analyze it deeper. You may split it and calculate it separately for your uh, for different locations if you have more than one, for different departments, for different equipment, even for different uh, physicians. Uh, if you do so, and uh, this is applicable not only for cancellations but for every. Uh, metric which we will discuss today and not discuss today. When you do such analysis, you may see that you may find that uh, in some cases your business is doing better. And in some cases you have sp some space for improvement. And uh, it will allow you better uh, uh, focus your efforts uh, when you want to improve it. But uh, we just discussed the cancellation rate. Uh, also, I want to mention that uh, cancellation rate does not go alone. There are a few related metrics, which I suggest you not to forget. Waiting time. Uh, days between, uh, 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 I will tell you uh, how I, I uh, think uh, is the most way, uh, accurate way to calculate it a bit later, but why waiting time uh, is uh, related to, uh, to uh, cancellations? Uh, unless you are uh, in a, uh, have no competition, and unless uh, for, uh, you, uh, your patients have a reason to book uh, appointments only in your, with your practice, uh, waiting time may have a dependency. Uh, nobody loves to wait. And uh, if there is a competition on the market, uh, uh, if your uh, patients have alternatives, uh, some of them may book appointment with you and then continue searching for uh, another opportunity which may happen earlier. And if they do, uh, they will book uh, an appointment with another practice and cancel yours. 
So uh, it really makes sense to check uh, uh, duration of your waiting time and look for dependencies between these two metrics. How to calculate it? Uh, there are different ways uh, and different approaches. I think that the most accurate is the following. If you can record at uh, the moment of each booking, uh, the date of the booking, obviously, uh, the first thing and second, uh, next available time slot for this particular location and service, then you can easily calculate the difference and take averages. So uh, uh, why doing so? Uh, why not comparing just date of uh, uh, booking and date of the appointment? Uh, some people are doing that far in advance. For example, uh, someone may want, if you allow this, of course, uh, to, to book an appointment, I don't know, in half a year, in six months, if you allow this. Uh, it doesn't mean that uh, there are no quicker, uh, there are no, uh, no uh, earlier time slots, but uh, it simply means that uh, this person may be a long-term planner and uh, he or she feels comfortable when uh, booking that in advance. So to calculate uh, the minimum waiting time, uh, I, I suggested to compare this to uh, two dates. Two more metrics uh, to, to consider. Time to rebook. This is a date between date of cancellation and date of uh, re rebooking the time slot. I just uh, told about that uh, on the previous slide. Uh, if you can calculate how, uh, how much time uh, in average it takes between cancellation and uh, rebooking of the same slot, you may make use of this information, even without uh, complicated IT systems. Uh, example, uh, if you know that uh, in average it takes five days to rebook a slot, you may implement a preventive call from your reception to your patients six days before. It means that uh, uh, your average time to rebook plus one day. They will call uh, each patient asking if everything is goes as planned or if anything changes. And uh, it may simply remind the patient uh, to cancel your appointment and you will do it in advance, uh, allowing uh, enough time to reschedule uh, the appointment and basically not be impacted negatively. This, uh, the last one, cancellation time to appoint, the last one which we discussed today, uh, cancellation time to appointment. Uh, this is uh, just to calculate uh, the most risky time of when people most frequently uh, do the cancellations. If you can identify this time, uh, if there are clear patterns of behavior of your patients, it may allow you to plan better to design better uh, uh, functionality of the waiting list. But this is actually a spoiler for our se second section uh, when we when we speak about uh, solutions. But uh, if you know these metrics, you can find better treatment of this problem. Let's move further. Second metric: follow up appointments. Uh, follow up uh, means uh, that uh, in, uh, in, for some of you, uh, it may be relevant when you recommend patients to uh, come back to your practice in some uh, in some time. Let me tell you my personal sad story with dentists. Unfortunately, I'm not very uh, I'm not very disciplined about dental health. Uh, I come to uh, usually I go to see dentists when I have urgent case. Uh, what happens then? They fix my tooth, they apply uh, temporary filling, and then they say uh, for me to come back, I don't know, in a month uh, to apply permanent uh, filling. And I think you know what happens then. I forget. Uh, yes, uh, sometimes uh, they call me once or two times uh, to, to remind sending me maybe some SMS, uh, but uh, oh, oh, they call usually in the most, uh, uh, in the worst possible time when I can even, uh, sometimes I cannot even talk properly, uh, not thinking about making a booking. Then they forget about me, I forget about them, and and basically, uh, it means that uh, they lost me as a client. Uh, I can recall about them just maybe in a few years or and may go to a different practice. If uh, you expect that uh, some of uh, your patients can be so undisciplined uh, as, as myself with dentists, and if uh, this, uh, this is relevant for you, uh, you may think about the following metrics, checking if this is true. And then you, uh, you may think how to improve the situation. Uh, the first one, uh, just uh, calculate how many patients receive a recommendation of a follow-up. 
second metric check how many uh, patients uh, show up this uh, following this recommendation uh, within some uh, date range uh, from the recommended date and also if you already uh, using uh, any uh, automated patient recall system again spoiler for the second section of today's webinar uh, you may want to calculate to see conversion of each reminders if you are sending a chain of reminders to your patients uh, uh, you may want to check uh, which reminders uh, result in bookings and which uh, uh, which reminders are just going to nowhere uh, in other words making noise for your patients again uh, this knowledge uh, may help you to identify if there is a problem in your case uh, which can be improved uh, and uh, to design the pro better system for uh, for patients' recall. Patient satisfaction. Uh, actually, there are many ways how to calculate it. Uh, I think the most popular are two. Uh, satisfaction survey and net promoter score. Satisfaction survey is simple. Uh, you send out uh, a form, which consists of usually several questions. One with a general, uh, general rate. How much are you satisfied with our service? And then maybe there are a few more detail, uh, detailed questions uh, uh, how to you know, for uh, uh, some particular fields which you think uh, are important for our clients. NPS works a bit different. It's just one question. How likely are you recommend us on a scale from zero to 10? Then uh, you uh, group your respondents by three groups. Uh, those who select nine or ten are so-called promoters. Uh, they are so happy; uh, they are re uh, really excited about your business uh, and your service. Passives usually select seven to eight. Uh, they are generally okay uh, with the service uh, with your services, uh, but not enthusiastic. And detractors uh, are those who are taken from zero to six. Uh, then you uh, to calculate NPS, you simply uh, uh, take uh, promoters uh, and deduct uh, the detractors from them. It will show you the figure of how, uh, by how much your promoters prevail over detractors. Uh, Top-notch companies uh, or, uh, or have figures like 60, 70, or sometimes 80, which is uh, uh, really, really high uh, volume. Uh, it means that, uh, for example, uh, let's take an example. Uh, you have 80% uh, of your respondents uh, promoters and 20% detractors. Uh, it means that the difference is 60, which is really, really good. Uh, what, can, uh, what is better, NPS or satisfaction survey? I think uh, you may apply them both. Make the first question of your survey from NPS framework and uh, then ask additional questions to, from, your, uh, from the uh, satisfaction survey framework. Uh, what can you do with this knowledge? At least two things. Uh, first, uh, you can uh, motivate your promoters to submit a review uh, on some external sources like Google Maps, Yelp. There are other resources which uh, where patients uh, uh, maybe there are some local resources, some local forums uh, which you know about uh, where patients uh, discuss uh, the uh, uh, medical practices and uh, leave reviews. And in case of detractors, uh, it, may, uh, it may make sense to call them, uh, asking, uh, uh, talking to them uh, what was wrong uh, in details. Uh, if you do it regularly, you may uh, notice that you, uh, and if you, if you listen to your uh, detractors and if you take actions to improve your service, you will see how, uh, how you may convert detractors to promoters. And this is a pretty common situation for those businesses which really want to listen to the clients. Patient acquisition metrics. Uh, there is a good uh, phrase. Uh, uh, Half of money I spend on advertising is wasted. The trouble is that I don't know which half. This is so true for uh, non-digital ways of uh, uh, non-digital channels of uh, advertising. Uh, magazines, billboards, I don't know, TV. Uh, I'm not sure, of course, that you are uh, using that, but still. Uh, well, you can, uh, uh, the problem of these channels is that it's uh, pretty difficult to attrib attribute uh, your clients to the channels, uh, uh, how do they acquire them. Uh, however, even in this case, IT systems can help. 
for example, during their first visit, you, uh, your reception may ask how did they know about uh, you and make a record in a CRM system. Again, a spoiler for the next section. But uh, of course, in digital uh, in digital world, when you uh, run advertising, in, uh, for example, in Google, and uh, people make booking uh, on your website, uh, you can attribute to them much more accurately than in case of non-digital uh, channels. What can you do with that? Uh, uh, I advise you. Uh, I recommend you to calculate at least two, at least two metrics: patient acquisition cost. You simply divide the number of patients you received from each marketing channel, or you simply divide uh, uh, costs uh, you spent uh, on each marketing channel by the number of patients you received from that. And second, uh, lifetime value, uh, how much do you earn on each patient in total? The second one uh, uh, could be uh, tricky. Uh, there is, uh, uh, if uh, for uh, uh, for some of you, uh, uh, this metric will be relevant. If you are spending some, uh, uh, if you uh, are uh, spending some uh, money on marketing budgets, uh, just drop me a message. Maybe uh, after the webinar, uh, uh, I will need to discuss uh, to uh, prepare to send you some materials about so-called cohort analysis. Uh, this is a, a uh, technique how to calculate uh, lifetime value properly. Uh, uh, today, it will take too much time to, uh, to discuss. I just want you to know that uh, there is such, such a thing. If you didn't hear about that, just send me a message and uh, uh, we will talk. Uh, why do we need these two metrics? You may compare them. Uh, uh, you may compare your patient acquisition cost uh, and uh, you may compare lifetime value and see what is bigger. Uh, 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 you may uh, notice that for some of your channels, your patient acquisition costs prevail uh, lifetime value uh, received on each patient. Please also consider that uh, in LTV, uh, you need uh, not revenue uh, received from your from a patient, but rather profit. Uh, if you have some, uh, some costs related to your uh, services, uh, which you need to, uh, which you, which occur, uh, uh, then uh, uh, Please uh, think about profits. Uh, and when you compare these two metrics, you may see that uh, for some uh, on some channels you simply lose money. Uh, it means that uh, the cost of the pay of uh, patient acquisition uh, is higher than uh, in average you uh, uh, earn uh, from uh, from that patient. Of course, consider uh, such things like families. For example, uh, you may acquire one member of a family and then they uh, bring uh, they bring uh, other members. But uh, uh, comparison of uh, patient acquisition costs and LTV may show you how, how effective your marketing is. Cost of document creation. I think this is a final section for a final group of metrics for the first section. And then we will, uh, we will switch to, uh, to actions or what you can do with it. <coughs> Uh, why did I select uh, uh, this topic out, out of uh, all expenses which you may hear, uh, which you may have? I think that many health practices generate a lot, a lot of documents, a huge number. Uh, of course, some do some documents require uh, are complicated and require uh, attention or, and uh, require time of uh, uh, prepare specialist. But uh, at the same time, uh, there are many uh, documents which are uh, simply or at least mostly copy paste exercise. When your people search different uh, data sources like your EHR system, like your or EMR, like uh, anything else, uh, and then copy pasting the data for, to, to templates, uh, basically, uh, uh, in today's world, uh, it's just a waste of time. Uh, uh, again, we will talk about that a bit later. How to calculate the impact of document creation on your practice? Uh, not complicated. Just uh, first of all, uh, write down the document types which you create. Then uh, uh, estimate the quantity by each document type. How many documents you create during uh, one month? Then uh, uh, you can uh, either talk to your uh, employees or just watch them doing that. Uh, estimate how much time it takes uh, to complete one document in average. And multi multiply uh, one by another, uh, you will see the number of uh, uh, hours which uh, you spend on uh, copy pasting exercise. And uh, uh, this is a source of uh, potential efficiency. If you make this time free, 
you can redirect it. Uh, uh, in some cases, of course, you may cut some um, cut your costs if you uh, have really huge uh, number of hours spent on uh, this document generation. Uh, you, uh, you may really uh, 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 reduce your uh, number of employees, or at least if your practice uh, practice grows, you will not uh, your expenses will not grow proportionally. But uh, even if you cannot uh, reduce number of personnel, you can uh, use their time uh, with more value for your business. For example, they may uh, make that uh, uh, calls to your patients, uh, uh, predictive calls, uh, trying to understand if they are going to cancel an appointment. They may call, uh, make phone calls uh, talking to detractors, uh, asking about what went, went wrong. There are ma many other things which uh, can be done only by human being. Uh, and uh, generation of documents can be aut easily automated. Before we move uh, to the next section, uh, just uh, again, a few more, more remarks. What, how, how to analyze your data? Uh, uh, first, uh, uh, I told that already on the uh, earlier slides. You can compare most of your metrics by different units. If you have different departments, if you have uh, uh, different locations, you can uh, compare uh, uh, between them how it works, uh, where, where uh, what is working better, what is working worse. Equipment, physicians, whatever you think, uh, uh, you may cal calculate waiting times, you may calculate uh, cancellations, you may calculate actually anything, including uh, patient satisfaction by departments, by physicians, and so on. Uh, the third topic, uh, the third point, uh, how you may analyze uh, those uh, metrics which are related to your clients, uh, you can check uh, by customer segments. And uh, it's not uh, uh, customer segments, it's not only uh, demographics, uh, some race, race, ethnicity, age, and something like that. Uh, 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 we will talk about segmentation a few minutes uh, later, but uh, if you uh, can group uh, your uh, clients by different behavior or by, by, by specific groups, maybe by professions, maybe by something else, you may see that uh, some of your uh, segments uh, will, will behave differently. For example, uh, you, you may find that some segment cancels, appoint, cancels appointments uh, more frequently than others. And uh, all this knowledge uh, will allow you to fine tune your solution to, uh, to the problem uh, a lot. And finally, look for dependencies. Uh, if you can uh, see clear dependency between uh, several, uh, several uh, metrics, uh, you can apply your, uh, your efforts to the root, uh, not to the uh, consequences uh, of a problem. Hey, Andre, real quick, we've got a few questions here. Yes, please. Um, first one is, you, know, you want to try to keep things simple. So when you're trying to analyze, should you keep certain data points to a minimum or should you explore all, all the things that, that, that come across your mind whenever you're trying to determine what you want to analyze and how you want to do it? Hmm, good question. Thank you. Uh, well, uh, my, I think my first re reply would be, uh, don't try to hit the ocean. Uh, when I wor worked in uh, Ernst & Young, I was, uh, several times I participated in proje projects when a big company hired us uh, to, to make a very co comprehensive uh, analysis of, of their business. And this is very typical for larger enterprises. Now, uh, oh, from one, thing, from one point, uh, it may be tempting to know everything about your business uh, from the beginning. But uh, in practice, it, uh, when, you, when you try to analyze too many uh, aspects of your business, you may spend uh, really months digging your data. Then you will spend another month, uh, not weeks, uh, discussing it uh, inside your company. And uh, it, it, it may take eternity, really. And at the end, you will, uh, you will receive a number of uh, uh, figures which are hardly to comprehend and uh, are hard to create an uh, actionable plan. Uh, and uh, not to speak that uh, during this period, some situation may change. Uh, I, I saw several times when uh, uh, the, a huge report, uh, the comprehensive reports uh, were, were prepared based on last year's uh, uh, numbers. And uh, technically the report was very correct, but uh, the, uh, the data was not actionable in today's reality. 
So uh, you, uh, don't try to analyze too much. Uh, I prefer more agile approach. Think about uh, uh, think about uh, areas when you intuitively feel uh, you may do better. Uh, try to dig uh, this one. Uh, uh, build quick prototypes and uh, of the solutions. And uh, in this particular case, Caspio uh, and low code solutions could be of great help, allowing to 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 build something in weeks, not years. Uh, 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 try uh, try to improve the data. Uh, try to improve the situation. Check your data. If you see that uh, you achieve success, great. Uh, if not, you, uh, you can move to another topic. But uh, uh, if you go with, with the small steps, uh, I believe that you will uh, you will uh, achieve success faster than trying to to do some huge comprehensive analysis. Uh, just avoid what we call uh, paralysis by analysis. When you are, uh, you have so much data, then you are simply can do nothing about that. Now that sounds good. I think you just answered the second question as well, which was uh, just: Do you have any advice about what not to do when you're you're trying to start this exercise? So I think you you got uh, there. But anything else you wanted to add on that that point? Uh, well, uh, uh, not to do. Yeah, uh, paralysis by analysis. This is obviously uh, one thing to avoid, but maybe there are there are many others. Just just out, out on the top of my mind, uh, avoid uh, making any uh, decisions based on bad data. I think about how how accurate your data is, how complete it is, because uh, if you uh, try to analyze uh, data which is not suitable for that, uh, you of course you may achieve success, but it will be a coincidence. Uh, you, uh, you have much more risk to to get absolutely uh, opposite results uh, compared to what you expect. Uh, what else to avoid? Uh, 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 when you uh, start uh, applying your data, uh, think about people. Uh, don't try to uh, to don't be too much obsessed with data. Don't uh, don't try to. Uh, immediately build in your metrics to some incentives uh, and uh, don't try to uh, to penal uh, apply some penalties to people who are not performing well for example if you see that uh, uh, some physicians are doing better some physicians are doing worse uh, 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 some of you may be tempted to uh, to uh, to ever uh, to use some uh, efforts to change the situation but uh, here is a trick that uh, 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 it's uh, when you rely on one or two metrics, it's very easy to manipulate uh, with them uh, for your employees if they want to, if they have reason to manipulate with the data. Uh, so uh, just uh, be very careful about managing people. Don't try to uh, apply it mathematically because uh, 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 mathematics uh, uh, may not always work. This is a, uh, a data to su to support your decisions, not to replace them. And uh, so be careful about that uh, and use it uh, like you use objective data, which does not uh, replace uh, experienced uh, healthcare professional. No, thanks, Andre. Uh, I think that's Good. all the uh, questions yeah. for now. Okay, let's yeah, let's move to second uh, second uh, uh, section. <laughs> the topic of today's webinar was how to turn data to action. We just to uh, talk about the data, so you take it, and now what to do with it. I prepared five ideas. Uh, uh, I think that, again, uh, in each particular case, there may be different solutions. These are just for your inspiration, what you can do with it. Uh, I grouped that uh, solutions by uh, almost by the uh, topics or metrics which we discussed before. Uh, waiting list uh, is a possibility to uh, when you have a uh, uh, long waiting line uh, uh, people need to wait for your for appointment with your practice for a long time and uh, at the same time you have a uh, high level of cancellations which is not acceptable for you you can uh, implement waiting list uh, uh, automatic procedure allowing inviting people from the end of the queue uh, to uh, to book uh, an appointment for earlier if someone uh, makes the slot free. Second topic uh, works uh, uh, sh should apply uh, should be applicable for uh, follow up discipline, uh, uh, making a smart tool reminding people to come back uh, when they are 
uh, when they have a follow-up uh, recommendation. The third uh, topic, custom CRM, that's about uh, your knowledge of your clients. Also here, you may keep information about uh, uh, customer satisfaction. Here, you may keep information about, uh, here you will work with segment, uh, customer segments. The first one is obvious, is uh, document automation, uh, how to make uh, generation of your documents uh, easier and uh, uh, quicker and uh, without uh, human effort. And the fifth topic uh, is what to do if you want to work with your data constantly and not, not just one as one exercise, but uh, as a uh, as a journey uh, like it, it should be. So uh, waiting this uh, functionality, uh, inviting people from the end of the queue to or, or schedule the appoint appointment for earlier. Actually, uh, it can be done, of course, in a form of a, uh, online booking if you don't have one, or it can be just a layer above uh, your online booking functionality. Uh, so uh, it may, uh, what it needs, it needs information about uh, patients who want uh, to subscribe for a waiting list or unsubscribe, opt in and opt out. And also it needs to, uh, it needs to have information about your bookings and about your cancellations. Uh, the primary functionality of this waiting list is custom targeting for notifications, selecting all that, uh, carefully selecting a proper clients to be uh, at the end of the queue to be informed uh, that uh, there is some space at the beginning. Uh, obviously, you cannot uh, inform everyone subscribed to, uh, for your waiting list uh, uh, about each uh, 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 cancellation, especially when you uh, you have more people uh, uh, in your waiting list. Just imagine that uh, you have 100 people uh, on the waiting list, and for example, uh, uh, con uh, cancellation happens twice a day. Uh, just imagine how much noise will you create if you try to send uh, notifications to 100 people that were just one slot uh, became uh, became free. It means that even if 50 people, uh, uh, if 50 patients decide to reschedule it for earlier, 49 will be disappointed that they are late. So, uh, and making this targeting properly, this is uh, this is a, a, a interesting exercise, and uh, or, or it need uh, or this is a case when uh, you may need some solution specific to your business, specific to your patterns of behavior of your patients, very specific to uh, your particular situation. And uh, in this case, one size fits all may not work properly. Automatic patient recall, uh, very similar situation, but uh, uh, it's, uh, it, uh, it also uh, works with targeting uh, of people, uh, how to remind them. Uh, uh, technically, it is a different solution for a di different, uh, different purpose, uh, but uh, here, what you need, uh, you need to uh, keep information about your uh, patients and uh, follow up dates. Again, it may be extraction from uh, your uh, electronic health record. And you, uh, you, uh, you may uh, need uh, yeah, a tool which will send uh, 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 reminders to them. And uh, oh, again, uh, it should be very uh, custom tailored for each particular case. Just uh, I was uh, just simple chain of uh, email, uh, of messages uh, like one day, one week, and uh, two weeks before uh, the appointment. Uh, it may not work as much effect effectively as you want uh, it to. And uh, in this particular case, you may need to do something smarter than uh, uh, out of the box solutions. Custom CRM. Uh, CRM it's customer relationship management system uh, where you uh, uh, different companies use it very differently. I know companies that used it uh, as just a centralized address book. Others are using CRM systems to log their uh, in the phone calls and other interactions with the system, with, with, with clients. I think that uh, the essence of uh, CRM is accumulating the knowledge about your patients and clients. Uh, as a practice, most probably you have lots of information about your patients. Uh, in many cases, it may be simply just decentralized and uh, not available for analysis. Uh, your patients must probably complete some intake forms, uh, especially if they do it on paper and the paper is stored in an archive. Uh, for data analysis of your business, uh, this data may be simply not available. Uh, 
uh, there are many other uh, uh, things which you may uh, which your people uh, know about clients and uh, which you can uh, use uh, in really effective customer segmentation analyzing uh, knowing your clients better uh, understanding them better and their behaviors but uh, if you want to collect this data in one space uh, you may need to make the system available uh, wider in your organization than uh, than just two or three people and uh, the problem is uh, there are obviously there are lots of standard CRM systems on the market and uh, if you are curious uh, why why you may need uh, anything uh, non-standard, this is the case. Uh, when you uh, when you try to make a standard system available to wider number of uh, people in your organization, keeping in mind success levels, of of course, uh, uh, you, you may see that the cost of running the, such CRM system may be may be really big. Most of the systems are charged by the number of users. And here is Caspio's strong point that uh, all their plans are uh, have unlimited number of users. So you may for, uh, uh, you may uh, just make a CRM system more accessible uh, uh, to uh, uh, people in your organization, asking them uh, to add uh, some small pieces of, of relevant information about your customers, which they know. Those who are uh, submitting, uh, working with intake forms, uh, just entering uh, maybe one or two fields uh, to, to a CRM system, uh, uh, which are relevant for you to understand in your clients. Obviously, intake form should not go to CRM. Uh, it's not proper place for that. And medical information should not, I, th I believe, uh, uh, be stored in CRM systems. Uh, uh, but uh, there are some pieces of valuable information that you can uh, use in your analysis, which you will need. It. And... Uh, this is one point. And second point, uh, uh, this is about data structure. Most of the standard CRM systems, uh, they are built for, uh, uh, they try to be everything for everyone, not, uh, not only for healthcare. And uh, 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 in many cases, uh, 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 when you need to create a contact, uh, you need to create a unique mobile phone and uh, enter a unique mobile phone and, and email. But think uh, when you are working with families, uh, uh, there are some uh, uh, clients uh, who are not patients, for example, parents who are not using your service and they, uh, they are just uh, uh, bo making booking for their kids. Uh, uh, and information about these clients should be stored in custom CRM, uh, in CRM system. And you have patients who are, which are not, uh, that are not necessarily clients, kids in my example. And what, what, what happens? Uh, in, in your standard CRM system, you may keep clients, not patients. In your uh, EHR system, you keep patients, not clients. And if you cannot properly book them, uh, link them, uh, your data may be really, really uh, not, use, uh, not suitable for analysis. You will have simply two islands of information without proper links. And uh, some custom solutions can resolve this issue. And uh, uh, document automation. This is pretty easy. Uh, in today's world, in to, uh, on today's, uh, uh, with today's technologies, uh, it's pretty easy to extract data from different systems, uh, populate some standard templates, uh, and make basically this, uh, some, uh, uh, some documents uh, created without spending too much time on that, uh, uh, without spending human time on that. Uh, and uh, uh, then you can do, do it, uh, then you can work with it very differently. You can ava make available th uh, these documents available via patient portal to your patients, or you can uh, just prepare some drafts for your employees, then uh, uh, they will uh, just uh, review, add more, uh, some additional information which cannot be extracted from the existing systems, and so on. Uh, such pretty easy, uh, I would say, uh, definitely this is not rocket science and such easy exercise may make uh, lots of time free uh, in your practice. And finally, data analysis center. Uh, during the, today's webinar, we just discussed five groups of metrics. Uh, for some of them, uh, it may be relevant, for, for, uh, but, but uh, for, uh, for others, for, uh, you may need to analyze something more. Uh, maybe in your case, uh, you have uh, problems in different uh, uh, areas of your business. And 
uh, anyway, if you wor uh, start working with data, especially in case when you have uh, not uh, just one system uh, in, in, your, uh, in your practice, if you have uh, either different systems like HR, like booking system, CRM system, uh, maybe you have separate customer satisfaction survey uh, functionality. Unless you cannot collect them in one space and uh, and uh, analyze it from different uh, points or angles, uh, uh, your uh, data analysis efforts will be uh, very, very uh, limited. And uh, when I speak about, uh, when I say data analysis center, I mean a functionality which allows you to extract data from different systems and what is most importantly important to adjust and clean the data. In some cases, uh, you can map uh, them automatically, for example, by emails, if you, if you, if you have uh, emails in uh, different systems. But uh, in many cases, you will not be able to, to, uh, to map them, and you will need to apply some manual adjustments uh, uh, to, to your data before it becomes suitable for analysis. And uh, what I like uh, uh, in Caspio is that they melted transactional functionality, which allows uh, uh, work with uh, uh, adjusting, adjusting data manually. Uh, with analytical functionality. For example, uh, for uh, analytical purposes, uh, there, uh, uh, there are systems like Microsoft Power BI or Tableau or ClickTech or ClickSense, uh, which are doing amazing work visualizing data. But uh, 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 before you want to visualize it, uh, you may need to, to clean and to, to adjust it. And uh, those systems do not have anything for, uh, suitable for you to adjust your data before we're work, working with it. And in, the, in case of Caspio, you can, you, uh, they pretty naturally melted uh, two, uh, two, solution, uh, two, two uh, worlds in one solution. Good, uh, I think we are almost finished. We are, uh, we are talking about one hour almost. Uh, just, just let me summarize, uh, just, just let me make a brief summary. And so uh, three steps. First, uh, think what data you have. Uh, collect this data, calculate the metrics, uh, then analyze it, uh, slice and dice it, uh, try to watch it from different angles, uh, compare between units, compare dynamics, and so on. Uh, oh, find your growth points, understand where uh, to apply your efforts uh, and uh, uh, what you can do with that. And finally, uh, build some solutions. Don't try to make something very perfect from the very beginning. Uh, you may build quick prototypes, uh, test it on some limited number of users uh, and see uh, how it works, uh, if it improves or not. Uh, but uh, the third point is maybe uh, the most important. If you simply just um, uh, analyze your data, watch it, put it to, uh, uh, to uh, uh, somewhere to a folder on your computer and never come back, uh, most probably nothing will improve. Uh, uh, so if you can act on it, if you can build uh, some solutions with, uh, which you, uh, uh, which, uh, which may help, uh, then uh, and if you do it regularly, uh, experiment with different areas of your business, I think you will quickly uh, see improvements and uh, see positive results, uh, uh, including your bank account and your revenue, uh, profit and loss state. So uh, uh, I ju uh, just talked about uh, five examples. Uh, uh, I more than welcome you to, 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 to check our blog. We, we launched it recently. We will see uh, if... Uh, uh, I, if there are uh, people interested in this kind of content, uh, and so we will create much more content, uh, also including uh, the topic which we discussed today and uh, also others, please go there, check, uh, subscribe. Uh, and uh, if, uh, uh, if you need uh, uh, to, to talk to us, uh, also at the end of the presentation, there will be our contacts. Uh, please drop drop me a message if uh, you didn't understand anything or uh, if you need some clarification or you need some advice how to apply it to your particular case. Let's talk. Now, Q&A section. Yeah, Andre, it looks like we got a, a couple questions here. So the first one is, you know, what size of healthcare organization would you recommend to take, you know, this sort of action on? Is it based off a number of clinics or patients or some sort of combination of both? Well, interesting. Uh, 
uh, obviously size does matter uh, in this case uh, and uh, when the scale of the business is bigger uh, working with data may become really essential uh, especially for larger practices uh, human our uh, human brain uh, and many people behave including myself uh, behave in a way that we can uh, control uh, intuitively we can control uh, five to seven elements uh, uh, of uh, uh, our activity uh, and usually uh, it uh, uh, this, uh, th these elements are uh, either questions we, uh, which are urgently problem uh, which have uh, some ur uh, urgency and pro or problem obvious or uh, those areas which we uh, build habits to control and uh, in case of larger organizations, uh, it's very easy to oversee uh, some uh, some questions as, uh, between areas of responsibilities of different uh, uh, units or different departments or whatever. Uh, and uh, in case of a bigger business, uh, it, uh, it's very difficult to uh, well uh, application of data uh, can be very very beneficial for a business. Uh, when we speak about smaller companies, smaller practices, uh, oh, I would say that uh, the question is how much do, uh, if you need to if, do you plan to grow your practice or not? If uh, you do, uh, it doesn't matter how small are you uh, uh, if you plan to grow uh, to grow uh, and uh, uh, the data may be uh, really, really beneficial. Uh, of course, I'm not uh, speaking to, uh, about growth of uh, say from ten to eleven physicians. But uh, even if you are currently a sole practice, uh, just uh, consisting of one doctor and uh, uh, is planning to grow to five, uh, from five to 10, uh, working with data is really, maybe really essential for you because you, during this growth, your company will change substantially. And uh, 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 those figures, which you always considered as given before the growth, May, diff, uh, may, be, uh, may change and you may not even notice it because when you uh, when you will grow you, are, you have lots of things to care about so uh, uh, speaking about sizes if uh, you are uh, practice size say 10 plus physicians already it makes sense if uh, if you are smaller but you want to grow it makes sense when it doesn't make sense when you are uh, when you are happy with your current results and you are not planning to grow but i think uh, i think th this is pretty applicable for uh, not only for data it, it's for any uh, for any change if you are happy with your current results if you do, if you don't need uh, if you don't feel the need to improve it uh, basically why do you need to change anything including data sure and then uh, the last question we have here uh, is you know in terms of measuring that action or when you're building those solutions what ways would you recommend measuring that that solution or action to see if it was if it was worth the uh, exercise? Well, uh, actually, uh, oh, that's that's what we uh, that's pretty much what we discussed uh, today. Uh, you start with analyzing. You, you check your data. You see uh, your current results. Uh, uh, then, uh, please, uh, then you may make some hypothesis what to do to improve it. Uh, uh, it can be uh, IT related. It can be ma some uh, uh, some manual exercises. But but then uh, you need to, uh, to to come back to the uh, to the same figures and ch uh, check if they changed for better. Hopefully for better. So uh, uh, and even if you see that uh, you are doing pretty fine, uh, you can simply just add this uh, particular metric to your uh, regular uh, procedure of calculations and we'll come back to these figures. I don't know in. in uh, two months or uh, in half a year, just making sure that the, the things are not going worse, that they're st still, uh, you are still doing good. Uh, it will help you to, to con even if you, uh, if you are, uh, uh, don't see any space for improvement, and if you uh, feel that you are, uh, your business is doing well, uh, it may, may help you to check uh, that the things are not changing for worse. And situations change. Uh, also, um, uh, uh, many people think that we are now standing at the beginning of uh, a new crisis, economic crisis, and the situation again may change. And, uh, 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 unless you have a really good uh, 
uh, tools for uh, managing your performance you uh, you may simply may overlook something uh, focusing on other topics which you think are more important and uh, some things may become uh, worse uh, 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 and you may find uh, you may find it uh, later than uh, than you could basically this is like something like uh, what, what what some healthcare practices recommend is a yearly checkup for for patients so to, uh, just making sure that uh, you you are doing fine all right that's all the questions we have uh, andre i think uh, um we can wrap up here uh definitely want to share our our contact information with uh, with everyone yes. <laughs> um you can reach out to andre or myself uh, if you have any questions about about Caspia or the presentation today, um, or you can find uh, uh, Andre and the Reinventors on our partner directory, uh, Caspio.com. Um, but definitely want to thank uh, uh, Andre for for the great presentation today, um, and so glad everyone could attend. Uh, so with that, we will wrap up today. But thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye now.